today, our presentation will be focusing on the second slide of biological modules topic. So in this topic, we will discuss and elaborate more on the proteins, on the, the structures of the protein molecule, the globular and fibrous protein, water, and so forth. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's look into the protein. Proteins are made of long chains of amino acid, and they are very large. Amino acid have similar structure with all amine group and carboxyl group that attach to central carbon atom. Twenty different types of amino acid, which differ in atoms, present in a group. And simplest amino acid, glycine, the R group is single hydrogen atom. You can see from this structure, this is amino acid, where it consists of the structure from carbolic group. So, two amino acid, this is one amino acid, and the other one amino acid, linked together by condensation reaction. They link together by condensation reaction to form the peptide. The bond that link them, they call as peptide bond. And water is also produced in the reaction. In the process of breaking down of the peptide, they can broken down in a hydrolysis reaction and which break the peptide bond with the additions of molecule of water. Structure of protein molecules. Amino acid can be linked together in a specific sequence to form a polypeptide change through peptide bond. The sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide or protein molecule is called primary structure. This sequence is determined by the genetic information encoded in our DNA. So a single polypeptide change may independently function as a protein, or in many cases, multiple polypeptide change come together to create a functional protein molecule. And the interactions between these change is often driven by various forces such as hydrogen bonding, disulfate bridges, and hydrophobic interaction. This multi-chain assembly enhance the structural complexity and functional diversity of protein in living organisms. The intricate three-dimensional structure of proteins when formed by a single polypeptide or multiple one is crucial for their biological activity and role in various cellular processes. The folding or coiling of the polypeptide change is a result of interaction between amino acid within the change. The alpha helix is a common secondary structure found in proteins, characterized by a right-handed coil or helical structure. This helix is stabilized by hydrogen bond formed between the amino and carboxylic groups of amino acid at different locations along the chain. Alpha helix contribute significantly to the overall three-dimensional shape of protein. The higher level structure is known as the tertiary structure. And the tertiary structure is very essential for the protein specific function and interaction with other molecules in cellular environment. The intricate folding and bonding pattern give each protein its unique and functional form. The molecular interactions like ionic bond, disulfate bond, hydrophobic interactions, these are the molecule interaction 
contribute to the folding stability overall structure of protein. And finally, you have quaternary structure. Quaternary structure arises when multiple polypeptide chains come together to form a functional protein complex. Let's look into the diagram. This is the amino acid, the sequence of amino acid in a polypeptide or protein molecule, which is called primary structure. And this is, we call it as helix. Okay, the folding or coiling of the polypeptide change is a result of interaction between amino acid within the change. And the alpha helix is a common secondary structure found in protein. Characterized by the right-handed foil or helical structure. This helix is stabilized by hydrogen bond formed between the amino and carboxylic group of amino acid at different locations along the chain. Alpha helix contributes significantly to the overall three-dimension shape of the protein and the higher level structure known as tertiary structure. And it is very essential for a protein specific function and interactions with other molecules in cellular environment. So the intricate folding and bonding pattern give each protein its unique and functional form. And the molecular interaction like ionic bond, disulfate bond, hydrophobic interaction. These are the molecule interaction which contribute to the folding, stability, and overall structure of the protein. Let's look into the quaternary structure. Quaternary structure arises when multiple polypeptide change come together to form a functional protein complex. Now, we look at the globular and fibrous protein. Globular protein have molecules that fold into a roughly spherical three-dimension shape. Example, hemoglobin, insulin, insulin, and enzyme. They often soluble in water. Physically, physiologically active, involved in metabolism, reaction within and outside cell. Meanwhile, fibrous protein they have molecules that do not curl up into a bond. They have long, thin molecules which often lie side by side to form fibers. Example, which is include keratin in hair, collagen in skin and bone. They are not soluble in water. They are not physiologically active and they often have structural rules. If you can see, these are the structure or the diagram homoglobin molecule, which is consist of iron, alpha chain, hemming group, B chain, and also helical shape of the polypeptide molecule. Okay, this is, and this is, we see through the microscope inside the red blood cells. When we enlarge, this is how the diagram look like. Now, look into the relationships between structure and function in homoglobin. So the function of homoglobin is the transport oxygen. Is first remember is, is the function is a transport oxygen from lung to respiring tissue, which is found inside red blood cells. The homoglobin, the ability is to combine or to contain within each polypeptide change which enable the homoglobin molecule to combine with oxygen. Oxygen molecule combine with iron in hemi hem group. On top of that, it's also pick up and release oxygen. Let's look the description about how it plays a role or function in terms of pick up and release oxygen. The overall shape of the homoglobin itself molecule enable it to pick up oxygen when concentration is high and to release oxygen when oxygen concentration is low. Small changes in oxygen concentration is actually give a large effect on how much oxygen the homoglobin molecule can hold. 
So once oxygen molecule has combined with one hem group, the whole molecule changes its shapes in such a way that it is easier for the oxygen to combine with the other three hems group. Now you look at the relationship between structure and function in collagen. Where the collagen exists, it exists in skin, in a bone, in a tendon. Okay. The reason being a collagen exists in the animal tissues like human skin, bone, and tendon is to provide support and some elasticity. Okay. And they have their own function as in human skin, human bone, and tendon. On top of that, collagen molecules are too long and too large to dissolve in water. The three polypeptide chains wind around one another, which is held together by hydrogen bond to form a three-stranded molecule that can withstand quite high pulling forces without breaking. That means he has a high tensile strength. And this structure also allows the molecules to stretch slightly when pulling. On top of that, every third amino acid in each polypeptide is glycine, whose R group is just a single hydrogen molecule. Their small size allows the three polypeptide chain in a molecule to pack very tightly together. And there are many lysine molecules in each polypeptide, which is facing upward from the three stranded molecule. And this allows covalent bond to form between the lysine group, R group of different collagen molecules, which causing them to associate to form fiber. These are what I already explained in the previous slide. This is how the diagrams are to be. And the collagen is formed from three polypeptide chains, which is held together by the hydrogen bond. So you can see when it becomes molecule. From the acid amino, it changed to molecule where the existence of three polypeptide change is held by the hydrogen bond. And then when the molecule is going to change to fiber, when there are many lysine molecules in each polypeptide, which is facing upward from the three-stranded molecule. And this will allow covalent bond to form between the lysine R group of different collagen molecules, which causing them to associate to form a fiber. Now, let's look into the importance of water in our body and importance of, of water to the surrounding. Okay, and why we need water? If you want to know, about 80% of organism body is water. Water has unusual properties as compared with other substances because of its structure molecules. Each water molecule has a small negative charge on the oxygen atom and a small positive charge on each hydrogen atom, namely the pole. The attractions between negative and positive charge on each molecule oxygen or atom is called hydrogen bond. Water also very important and also water as a solvent. If you stir sodium chloride into water, the sodium and chloride ion will separate and spread between water molecules. They dissolve in the water. This happens because the positive charge on each sodium ion is attracted to the small negative charge on the oxygen of the water molecules. So in addition, the dipole of water molecules make water excellent solvent and how the water play an important role in terms of dissolve. Similarly, the negative chloride ions are attracted to the small positive charge on the hydrogen of water molecules. Any substance that has fairly small molecule with charges on them or that can separate into ions and can dissolve in water. Water also acts as the transport of the substance. Any substance that has fairly small molecule with charges on them or that can separate into ions can dissolve in water. 
In addition, water also acts as a medium. How? It's help to transport substances around the bodies of organisms. The plasma of mammal is mostly water and carries many substances in solution, which is include glucose, oxygen, and iron, such as sodium. Water also acts as a medium in which metabolic reactions can take place as the reactants are able to dissolve in it. Let's look into the thermal properties of water. Water is a liquid at normal earth temperatures. The hydrogen bond between water molecules prevents them from each other at normal temperatures on earth. Between 0 Celsius, 200 Celsius, water is in liquid state. The water molecule move randomly forming transitory hydrogen bond with each other. Water has high specific heat capacity. How they do that? Specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy that has to be added to a given mass of substance to raise its temperature by 1 Celsius. Temperature is related to the kinetic energy of the molecules. The higher kinetic energy, the higher the temperature. A lot of heat energy has to be added to water to raise its temperature because much of the heat energy is used to break the hydrogen bonds between water molecules, not just to increase the speed of movement. Ocean or lake do not change the temperature as easily as air does. It means that body of organism which contain large amount of water do not change temperature easily. Water has high latent heat of evaporation. When liquid is heated, its molecule gain kinetic energy, which is lead to moving faster. Those molecules with the most energy are able to escape from the surface and fly off into the air. A great deal of heat energy has to be added to water molecules before they can do this because the hydrogen bond between them have to be broken. When water evaporates, it absorbs a lot of heat from surrounding. The evaporation of water from skin of mammals when they sweat has a cooling effect. Water freezes from the top down. Liquid water becomes more dense as it cools because the molecules lose kinetic energy and get closer together. When water becomes a solid freeze, water becomes less dense than it was at 4 Celsius because the molecules form a lattice in which they are more widely spaced than in liquid water at 4 Celsius. Ice, remember ice float on water. The layer of ice then act as an insulator slowing down the loss of heat from the water beneath it, which tend to remain at 4 Celsius. The water under the ice remains liquid, allowing organisms to continue to live in even when air temperatures are below the freezing point of water. With that being said, I would like to thank you to all of you for listening and understand the subject matters. Please don't forget to subscribe to Jones Nadilla YouTube channel. And I hope you to see in the next presentation slide. And if you have any problems or encounter any issues with regards to this presentation, so you may email me at jomstadilla at gmail.com or you can provide any comment from this slide. Thank you very much.